Hi, my name is Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. This is episode 61, Willingness versus Wanting. What I learned early in my recovery is that there are three things required to recover, to really change, and they go by the acronym HOW, H-O-W, honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. I'm going to focus on willingness today, but briefly, here's what I learned about H-O-W. So H is for honesty. You've got to be honest if you really want to recover. There's no point in doing the work if you're not going to be honest, or at least as honest as possible in the moment. When I came into recovery, I actually thought I was an honest person, but it turns out, no, I wasn't. I was in denial, D-E-N-I-A-L. Didn't even notice I'm a liar. If you want to hear more about that, listen to episodes 16 and 23, which are both about denial. And it would be really helpful if you listen to both of them, actually, because I was in denial about my denial. And you'll hear more about that in the second one. Um, But anyway, as soon as I realized through the process of recovery that I wasn't telling the truth, I would come clean. So you do the best you can. You be as honest as you can in that moment. And O, O is for open-minded. You have to be open-minded to the idea that there is something you don't know. There is something you haven't tried and that there are other ways and that you can be helped. And that there exists a power that is greater than you, a power of some kind, though it doesn't have to be God, it doesn't have to be divine, it doesn't have to be supernatural. You just have to open your mind to the idea that we know something you don't, which is why we've recovered and you haven't. And then there's W, willingness. In my opinion, based on my own experience and what I've seen in the rooms, is that this is the most important of the three. If you are willing, you can make it through anything. So if you're willing to be honest to the best of your ability, that's enough to get you started. If you're willing to be open-minded to the best of your ability, that's enough to get you started. Now, just because you're willing to do something doesn't mean you have to want to do that thing. There is a distinction here. I am willing to use a needle to take a splinter out of my finger. I don't want to, but I am willing. Now, I have all kinds of thoughts about willingness, but I'm going to share about someone else here to illustrate the power of willingness. I was in a 12-step workshop where a guy who's from another state said he'd be here for the next few months, and he said, I had one minute of willingness yesterday. So during that one minute, he went to the intergroup website and found the workshop. So he came and at the workshop, he learned that there's a local men's meeting. He didn't have the opportunity to attend a men's men's meeting in his home state, which he was really excited about. And he got connected to a bunch of folks in the room while he was there at the workshop. This reignited his recovery because he'd been away from meetings for months. And then he said, that all came from one minute of willingness yesterday when I went to the website. Can you imagine what I could accomplish if I had an hour of willingness or even a day of willingness? I thought that was really striking and profound. So like this guy says, sometimes even if you only have a minute, sometimes even a second of willingness, it can make all the difference in the world. Sometimes in the beginning of recovery, the only willingness you need is the willingness to pick up the phone and dial a number or the willingness to Google something. Just be willing. And then eventually, maybe it's willingness to abstain from your addiction for just one day. And then maybe willingness to follow the suggestions of your sponsor and maybe willingness to go to a meeting. Eventually, you do have to become to be willing, you excuse me, you do have to become willing to do whatever it takes to recover. But in the beginning, just the tiniest bit of willingness can carry you very far. Now, if you've hit bottom, like most people who come into recovery, and it's not your first attempt to try to make your life better, and this feels like your last stop, you will have to become willing to do whatever it takes to recover. 
All these different kinds of willingness that I've mentioned eventually got me to the point where I thought I am willing to make amends to the people on my list. I don't want to make amends to some of them, but I am willing. And of course, I eventually did. It's my experience that willingness plus your higher power can take you anywhere. You can overcome any obstacle whatsoever with willingness and your higher power. The programs that I'm in, at least in my area, have a shortage of sponsors and people seem who seem to be well qualified are not sponsoring and they have all kinds of reasons. And one of the things I find myself saying to them is if you've got more time and recovery than another person and you are willing to be a sponsor and you have a higher power, that's all you need. Willingness and your higher power will get you through whatever comes up as a sponsor, just as it will with your own recovery. We need to be connected to other people. One of the things that most of us have in common, no matter what we're in recovery for, is that we're super good at isolating. So we need to learn to reach out to other people. And the thing about reaching out to other people is that all of these same things are required, honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. You have to be honest and say, hey, I need some help, or I'm not sure what to do, or I don't even know what to say, but my sponsor told me I had to make three calls. You have to be open-minded to the idea that somebody can actually help you that somebody might actually want to help you, that they might know something you don't know, and that reaching out matters, not just for you, but for the person you reach out to. Remember, it strengthens our recovery to carry the message. That's why it's in the 12th step. And you have to be willing to actually try things that you've never tried. Willing to try things people say have worked for them when you reach out to them and you ask them, how did you manage this? And willing to listen to their feedback when you tell them what's going on. And then, of course, willing to take action. You don't have to want to do all these things, but if you're willing, your willingness can get you through anything. And one of the ways we demonstrate our willingness is through action. I have a little tiny story from when I started working with my first sponsor. She was a a sponsor in my second program, and she required me to go to two face-to-face meetings every week for that fellowship. I was already going to four to five meetings a week for my other fellowship, and I worked full-time, so I told her I was too busy. And she said, well, maybe you'll have to skip one of those other meetings from your other fellowship. Now that just did not feel like an option for me. So I looked at my schedule and decided I could go every other Sunday night to one meeting. And then on the weeks that I couldn't go to that, I'd go on a Tuesday night to another meeting. So the next week when I spoke with her on the phone, I told her this and she said, Barb, that is called willingness. You told me, no, I'm not going to go to two meetings a week. I don't have time. But then you took action. You looked up what meetings were available and you made a schedule for yourself. That is the kind of willingness you need to recover. So my friends, remember, you don't have to want to take the actions that are suggested to you, but you do have to be willing. That's it for today. If you like what you've heard here, then you just might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, head on over to my website, which is higherpowercoachingandconsulting.com and click on the contact menu. I'd be happy to schedule a consultation with you to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be sure to get future episodes of my podcast. Thanks again.